All right, this video is going to go over the very basics of probability in statistics. So the first thing I want to do is let's discuss what probability actually is. So probability is the chance that an event will occur. I like to think of it of how likely something is to happen. The notation for probability looks like this. If I have the probability of A, which means the probability that A will happen. A is our event, and P represents the probability of that event. The first important thing you need to know about probability is that it must be between 0 and 1. So a good way to look at a probability here is like this. I have a number line between 0 and 1. 0 will, is certain that the event will not happen, up to 1 where it is certain the event will happen. In the middle, your probability has an even chance of happening. Either it's going to happen or it will not, and that's 50-50. Closer to 0, it is unlikely. And closer to 1, your probability is likely. Okay, Your probability cannot be negative, and it also cannot be greater than 1. Think of it as a percentage. Your percentage has to be from 0% to 100%. Now that we know what probability is, let's take a look at the types of probability. The first type of probability is subjective probability. Subjective probability is probability based off of knowledge or an educated guess. Examples of this would be the probability of getting hit by lightning or the probability of a meteor hitting the earth. We don't know the exact probabilities of those, so we have to use uh, an educated guess to figure that out. The next type of probability is called theoretical or sometimes called the classical approach to probability. This says that the probability of an event is equal to the number of ways A can occur over the to total number of possibilities. The probability comes from what should happen. So if you're looking at rolling a dice, and you want to find the probability of rolling a 1. Alright, so you need to think about what our event is. Our event is rolling a 1. So how many 1's are there on a regular 6-sided dice? There's only one 1 on that. So that's the number of ways A can occur. And then we would look at the number of ways that, or the total number of outcomes. How many d numbers are on the dice? There are six, so that is the total number of outcomes. So that is theoretical thinking about what should happen. Now there's one more type of probability. Let's look at that. In experimental probability, probability is based on data collected from an experiment or from a study. So an example of experimental probability would be flipping a coin and seeing, recording all of the possible outcomes of this, maybe you flip it 100 times and you get heads 60 out of the 100 times. Then the probability of getting a heads would be 60 out of 100. Even though the theoretical would say that flipping a head should be 50-50, so 50 out of the 100. Experimental takes a look at an experiment done, not the theory behind it. Let's look at some notation of probability where we have multiple events. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the probability of A, which we've already seen. We would say that that is P of A. So you should know that by now. 
The next one is the probability of B, which would just be written the same way, the probability of event B. Now the first multiple event we will see is if we have addition rule of probability. That would be where we're trying to find the probability of one event or another event happening. To find that probability, it will look like this. The probability of A or B. And then we shorthand that into the probability of A or B. So when you see the probability written like this, that means the probability of A happening or the probability of B happening. An example of that would be like find the probability of rolling a dice and getting a 1 or a 2 on the dice. So it's one event or another event. Now actually finding the probabilities can get a little more complex than that. Sometimes the events may be overlapping or they could be mutually exclusive. The next notation we're going to look at is the multiplication rule of probability. So that would be the probability of event A and the probability of event B. The notation for that is not just the probability of A and B. We would write it the probability of A, then an and sign, B. So this right here is the notation for the probability of A and B. An example of Multiplication probability would be where you're trying to find the probability of two events happening either at the same time or one after another. So an example of this would be rolling two dice at the same time and wanting both of them to be the same number. Or rolling one number after another and finding them both to be sixes. Or even if you had a deck of cards, and what's the probability of drawing three kings in a row? The next notation we'll look at is when we have a probability that is conditional probability. That probability looks like this. The probability of B given A has occurred. Alright, I wrote that a little bit nicer so that it didn't look so weird. So the probability of B given that A has already happened. The notation for that looks like this. The probability of B, this line means given A has occurred. A has already happened. The last notation that we will look at is the complement probability. So if I have here the probability of A. Either A is going to occur or it will not. So there's a notation for A not occurring. Okay, this right here would be the probability of not A. Alright, so the two together actually do some interesting things that should make sense. If you have the probability of A and you add the probability of A not occurring, this is saying either A is going to occur or A is not going to occur. That probability will add to 1. That means the probability of A not occurring is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. So that is the last type of probability that involves multiple events.